Well, good day to you fellow RC fans. This is Michael Crash Hancock. I was checking out forums and such the other day and I came across a interesting post that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, in this post it talked about a gentleman that I know that uh, was looking for an, an easier way to make Z-bends for his push rods. So what he did, he went out and bought himself a pair of Z-bend pliers. Well, I think he paid like twenty dollars for them. Well that's what you have right here. I bought this pair of Z-bend pliers. Well they're starting to get a little rusty. It's a neglected tool because well I've used it every bit of like three times in the twenty years that I've had it. The concept is pretty interesting. I mean it's pretty neat. You slide your wire in and just crimp the snot out of that piece of wire and it should yield a Z-bend. Well the theory's good but with this pair of pliers, and I paid like $19 for them ages ago, in the late 80s I guess, well this is the Z-Bend that it yields and I'm going to try to bring it up here and show you. But you can see the space in here is very narrow so if you're going to try to feed that into a servo control horn or even a big nylon push rod or a, a push rod control horn or a servo horn, either way it, it's 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 going to be so tight it's always going to be pulling back on the linkage well like I said this tool right here twenty dollars this is crap um, I would never recommend anybody buy one of these take my experience and my wasted dollars uh, to heart here you don't need them what you need here is a pair of regular old pliers and then maybe a pair of needle nose pliers to do a little cleanup but I'm going to show you real quick how I make Z-Bends now this works on the tiny, tiny little wire, the uh, 047 thousandths, whatever, all the way up to the big wire, like in my 120 size pattern planes I used to fly. And I found this technique to work best. This technique came from an old veteran modeler friend of mine who's, well, he's since passed. But he showed me this years ago after I expressed my grief with this piece of junk. And ever since then, this is all that I've used. This is the only technique I've used. I'm going to get up here close to the camera and I'm going to try to show you how this works. Basically you take your wire and your pliers and you just come in the edge just a little bit and crimp it in there, hold it tightly and then give it a 90 degree bend. See what we've got there? I can show you against the white background. 90 degree bend. Now we're going to come up and we're going to grab it again try to set the depth about the width of we want that Z-bend to be for our control horn and clamp it tight and do it again 90 degrees and what you end up with is you know this funny looking shape that's you know not a Z-bend at all I'm gonna give it a little bit more sometimes I go past 90 degrees to yield what I want now I'm gonna grab this first bend as such and I'm just gonna give it a twist just twist the whole thing and now, do a little clean up here, and sometimes I use a needle nose for it. But now, you can see here, I've got a wide 90 degree bend. That's probably a little too wide, but you can see the technique that I use. Anyway, I've started using this again about two decades ago, and this is the best technique that I have found. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Don't waste $20 and buy a pair of Z-Bend pliers. Now I could be wrong. There could be better pliers out there. I've tried those pliers on the real small wire and on the real big wire. And what I'm always left with is this real narrow Z-Bend. And I just that doesn't work for my needs. I need something like this. So anyway, I hope maybe... Uh, that helps you. If you have any questions, email me at crash.hancock at gmail.com and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.